Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and there is one more thing that I want to discuss with this MongoDB image. Now remember, in one of the video I told you that whenever a temporary container is being created, it's not technically being deleted. Now time to understand this in a bit more detail. Now whenever a container or a temporary container is being created, we have seen that at every single step that we have mentioned in this Docker file, these are being created, but we have also uh, seen that actually being going up at the top that yes, these containers are created and these are being popped up into message as well. But what I want to show you now that our machine is being created, let me hit control C actually to just shut it down and hit control L. Now I still have this Docker file going up here and I haven't actually made any change at all in my Docker file. Now what's going to happen if I run this build command again? Let's just check this out. When I say docker build dot and let's hit enter, and you can see there is like ridiculously speed up going on in here. And there are some messages that are coming up. Now the concept of the cache is like super easy, but some people just make it woo, like too much complex. It's not, it's not. The cache simply means there was something already being stored in our cache memory and it was just exactly usable and we're just using it. That's all it's about. So we can see that at the very top it says from Alpine. So this was running and it says, hey, in order to run this command, I already have a cache, means I already have a container which did the exact same job just right here. So if everything is same, I don't need to do it again. I can use that cache or that existing temporary container to run it again. And then it moved on to the next command. It says, hey, the previous things are exactly same and this command newly is added on top of it so I can use another cache and I can run this. Now similarly, it's using the cache after cache after cache and everything is going on so speedily. But things actually change a little bit and this is the reason why Docker performance is like super impressive. Now let's just say we're gonna add something up here. So what we're gonna do just below the command where we have added the MongoDB, we're gonna add another a program or a software up here. So we're gonna say run apk and we're gonna simply say add bin utils. There we go. Now again, you don't need to understand what this program is and why it is being used. It doesn't really matter. What I want to do is I just wanted to add one more line just at a specific point. Notice I'm not installing it at the top, I'm putting it somewhere in the middle and specifically just after MongoDB. Make sure you also do there because in the Docker file where you're writing your next code actually matters a lot. The instructions are being followed line by line. Now let's go ahead and run this again and we're gonna say docker build dot and let's see what's happening up here. Now it's taking a little bit time, but it was rather faster as compared to the very first time. Now let's see something is going on up here. So I ran this command somewhere, if I can find it here, there we go. So at here top, we can see this is from Alpine coming up and notice here we say is using cache because this command echo was used before. So yeah, we can actually use a cache in this place. In this place also the second echo command yeah, we can use the cache here as well. Then hit update. Yeah, that was also performed in a separate container. We can reuse that. Till the MongoDB is installed, it is being reused. But notice, once after it has installed the MongoDB and has used the cache, it says run apk bin utils. That means this command was never executed in this specific order. This should be highlighted in this specific order. So that's why we cannot use the cache anymore. And in this place, it is running an installer again one more time. And therefore, after that, we cannot use cache because the previous container is now different. So we have to do everything after that into a separate machine. That's why it cannot use that cache again. And again, rest of the things are being done into a separate intermediate container. Now let's understand it one more time. So these are all these updates. Now what I want to do is just after the exposing of this and before the default command, I want to install one more program just for fun. So we're gonna simply say run apk add and this time I want to add isl. Now this isl program cannot be installed like, like a default. There is an additional binary or supporting software that needs to be installed up here. So it's gonna install that one as well. Let's see that in action one more time. Make sure you write them exactly at same point. So we're gonna run this again. I'm gonna simply say docker build. I'm gonna hit control L to clean that and hit enter. Now notice, so fast, but again, it got stopped somewhere here. 
So what we noticed, we now all understand that the previous caching can be used if the top lines are not being changed. But in case anywhere you just add something there, that means I cannot use cache after that line of code. So similarly, we have got this APK add ISL and ISL need uh, GMP software as well. So that's why it's running it there and after that all the things are going on. Now the conclusion. This concept of cache simply means that if existing code is there in the cache which is helping us to we have performed this kind of operation in the past as well it's going to use the cache but in case it's going to see any new line of code even a slight change of that it's going to start building a new container for that so make sure you understand this that whenever you create a docker file any even single addition of that docker uh, wherever you are inserting it after that all the things are going to be a recalibrated kind of a thing or the new containers will be created after that and this use of the caching memory or the caching softwares and utilities the performance of this docker is ridiculously fast that's it that's all your cache memory is so now that you understand a lot about the docker including the caches creating this you have been exposed to a couple of new commands like run volume and expose and you've also seen that how these commands actually work and what their syntax is all the commands are in the capital letter and after that whatever you add is actually your parameters or whatever you want to do inside the docker most of the docker commands in fact all of the docker commands are just one liner and that's how it goes on definitely we are going to be seeing much more of the docker command if you're going to hit that subscribe button in the in the youtube section then of course we're going to see more about the docker so that's it for this video hit that subscribe and i'm going to catch you up in the next one